I mean, the Shia people, they are very similar to the Jewish people in, in the Old Testament. When you read the Old, Test the Old Testament, the prophets and the messengers in the Old Testament, they rebuke the Israelites many times. They call them evil followers, evil people. And if you read the Shia sources, the 12 Imams of the Shia likewise, many times rebuke the Shia and call them evil people. Subhanallah. So we love Hussein, rather from the Aqeedah of Al-Sunnah Jama'atullah Al-Bayt. But loving Hussein doesn't mean we should worship him beside Allah. Likewise, loving Jesus, alayhi salam, doesn't mean we should worship him beside Allah. So the, this is a reminder to me and to you, may Allah bless you all, to fast tomorrow and after tomorrow. It is not compulsory. It's highly recommended, especially we are full, with, full of sins. You want opportunities to our sins to be forgiven. May Allah bless you all. So this is a reminder about, and you should read and study the seerah of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Musa's story is very powerful with Fir'aun. Remember Fir'aun wanted to kill the boys of Bani Israel because he had a dream that one from the boys of Bani Israel is going to destroy the uh, dynasty and the empire of Fir'aun. So what he did, he said, kill their boys and keep their girls. However, the people of Mesir complained to Fir'aun. They said, how are we going to have slaves from Bani Israel? You know, we have to, they have to save us. We said, here you kill the boys and one year you don't kill them. Guess who was born in the year that Pharaoh commanded the soldiers to not kill the boys? Who was born in that year? Harun. Harun was born in the year that where Pharaoh said, do not kill the boys. And Musa was born in the year, Musa was born in the year, the year, the year which Musa, which Pharaoh said to kill the boys. What Allah is showing us, my brothers and sisters, don't ever give up. Regardless how many hardships you're going through, Allah will take you out from it. Allah will take you out from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Musa was born on that day, in that year, and who raised him? Who raised Musa? Fir'aun. Fir'aun who was killing many boys to kill the, uh, for the sake of, forget me, for the sake of for his dynasty, he's going to raise up a child that he was scared of. He's going to raise up the child he killed many boys for. So Allah show Fir'aun, Allah is that powerful. The Almighty belongs to Allah. This guy has a jinn. I don't know what jinn he has. You know, anyway, so the point here is that Allah wants to us his power. He was raised by Fir'aun, subhanAllah. And who believed in him? Who believed in Musa? The wife of Fir'aun. Called Asiya bin Muzahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Quran. ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مْرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ Allah has given example to be followed. The wife of Fir'aun. قَالَتْ رَبِّ بْنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Asiya That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Asiya bint Muzahim she said Oh Allah save me from Pharaoh and his actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved her. Allah praised her. And Allah never praised Fir'aun. Even though Pharaoh, he had authority, he was a strong man, he was a, a conqueror, but Allah gave us an example to follow the wife. That's why in the Quran, Allah mentioned another example for the believers to follow, the mother of Jesus. So we're not with feminism, and we are not with the red pill movement. Yes, we don't negate, maybe some of them have, have some element of truth. However, those elements of truth is based upon the wrong fallacies, wrong principles. So we are not in need of that. If you need solution, my sister in Islam, is in Quran and Sunnah. My brother, if you need solution, you need a solution is in Islam, the Quran and Sunnah. So uh, that's my advice to you. That's my reminder to you that we should follow the Quran and the Sunnah. May Allah bless you all. And what Ibn Taymiyyah said, if every dog starts barking at you, 
and you throw a stone at him, then the dog, the, I mean the stone will be more expensive than gold. The Christian believe that God pretending to be a baby was inside a private woman and he has a gut speak. God pretends to be baby and that's God and he's inside a private woman. You know, Audu Billah. Alhamdulillah, Barakallah Fikum. Two factors, psychological factor or social factor. Psychological factor, he you knows Islam is the truth, but he's arrogant. Can, how can I follow a man from the Arab Peninsula? You know, he knows. So when I start doing looking for any excuse or social factor, if I accept Islam, I have to change the way I dress, you know, and I have something I like, but all of these reasons not valid. And she knows that. But we ask her to guide her. Yeah, yeah, because imagine, she left, yeah, she's gone. You know, subhanAllah, imagine the day of judgment saying, oh Allah, I'd accept you because I like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, inshallah, but she seems sincere, inshallah. Yeah, we ask Allah to guide her. Well, alhamdulillah, it will make sense for everything. Alhamdulillah, sometimes it takes time. Some people accept Islam straight away, sometimes it takes time. And some people, they say to me, Shamsi, I don't like when you tell people become Muslim. Why should I tell them to become Christian? When <laughs> they become Muslim, what am I tell them? Because why? Sometimes the person wants to become Muslim, but he needs just a little push. And sometimes Satan is stopping him. So you push it, then you tell him, listen, I'm not putting pressure on you. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came to the man. He said, become Muslim. He said, I don't feel it. He said, become Muslim. Because he said, because why? Shaitan is stopping him. So we follow the way of Prophet وسلم. You know? So Alhamdulillah, what I'm doing, I know I'm doing Alhamdulillah. Uh, Prophet وسلم did it. You know? And if I see the person, he wants more time, I said, look, take time. But how many times people say, I don't want to become Muslim today? You speak to him more, he says, take shahada. Many times, Alhamdulillah. You know, Barakallah Fikum. Barakallah Fikum. Jazakallah Shaykhna. He gave me a nice uh, uh, benefit. Prophet when he went to the Jewish boy, he said to him, become Muslim. He said to him, how are you feeling today? Straight away, become Muslim. And he said to him, Ati Abu Al-Qasim. So my brothers, before you start speaking about something, have a knowledge. You know, you said to become Muslim, Alhamdulillah. Barakallah Fikum. Different matter. For example, in the Quran, there's no cigarette. Allah never said do not smoke, but in the Quran give us principle, anything that harms you is forbidden. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah made that which is good for you halal, Allah would, that which is evil is haram, is forbidden in Islam. You know, that's why Islam came to preserve five things. Wait, Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? In Islam, paganism, politism is forbidden. You only worship one God. Because when you don't have no guideline from your God, you start following your desires. So today, you said it's okay, tomorrow you change your mind. Next one, Islam came to preserve the intellect. That's why alcohol and drugs is forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to preserve wealth. That's why interest and gambling is forbidden. Fourthly, Islam came to pre preserve marriage life. That's why adultery and fornication is forbidden. Fifthly, Islam came to preserve lives. That's why killing people unjustly is forbidden. That's why alcohol destroys societies. Gambling destroys societies. Uh, interest, where's interest? Interest is for the bankers to utilize it to make themselves richer and to make the poor poorer. So that it destroys societies. So likewise, fornication, adultery destroy families. So Islam come to preserve families preserve our intellect, preserve our health. So why some people hate Islam? There's two types of people hate Islam. Either they're ignorant about Islam or those who are making money from the suffering of the people. Because these vices I've mentioned, gambling, alcohol, interest, and so on, some people do make money from them. But overall, it's very harmful to societies. If I'm, I'm, if I'm a man and I'm making money from gambling, from interest, from uh, uh, what they call it, uh, 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 alcohol, then you come as a Muslim, I'm going to look at you as my enemy, even though you want good for the people. But because I'm making the money from the suffering of the people, what I'm going to do, I'm going to utilize my wealth because I'm rich to make you look bad, even though you're a good person. And this was happening exactly. The, problem, the, problem, the problems that we are facing today, there is no solution except by following Islam. How a man that existed 1,400 years ago, he's coming this, with this perfect way of life. You know? 
How? Because he was a messenger of the Creator.